On today's program, Adam Gabelli, ICEJ Canada Deputy Director and ICEJ Canada National Executive Director Donna Holbrook discuss 20 years of ICEJ Canada. And Rabbi Shmuel Bowman continues his teaching on the Sukkot. Thanks for joining us again today in studio, and I am so honored to be joined by our national director here of the Canadian branch, Donna Holbrook. Donna, thanks for joining us today in studio. Pleasure, pleasure, Adam. Today, Donna, I wanted to take a look back. 20 years ago, you became the director for the Canadian branch, and things were very different back then. Now, we're going on 40 years, uh, 41 actually, of the embassy, the founding of the International Christian Embassy. Um, but the Canadian uh, office and branch kind of had a, a, a big transition 20 years ago. Uh, there was almost nothing in Canada 20 years ago. And then a, uh, this young lady from Toronto shows up on the scene, Donna Holbrook. Uh, Donna, tell us, uh, let's take a look back. 20 years ago, what was it like? And, and what's the story behind the almost the rebirth of the Canadian office of the ICJ? Well, that I haven't gone back there in my memory for a while. It wasn't a direct line. And how I was involved with ICJ in Canada and with Jerusalem um, was due to God and Aunt Harriet. So I have a little story to tell you. Um, in 1994, uh, we gave birth to our second child, uh, Jeremy, a son. Unbeknownst to us, Jeremy wasn't well enough to thrive in this world. Mm -hmm. And uh, exactly three weeks after his full birth, that is full birth, full term birth, um, he passed away. He, he left us. And... Um, if anyone's lost a child, that's, that's heartbreaking. Can't even imagine. And you never really get over that. So my Aunt Harriet was already involved with ICEJ. She was actually on the Canadian board. And um, after, after Jeremy, I went looking more deeply for God as to why would this happen? Why could we have a beautiful daughter who was then three and a half and not have a son who would thrive here. So um, we went through that differently, Richard and I, and, uh, but I pressed in with my faith. And Aunt Harriet, bless her heart, um, she gave me a scripture. Now, just to say, um, 11 is important to our family. All the men in, well, three, three, one, two, three. Three of the men in, the, four, in fact, um, Males born in the Holbrook family uh, were always born on the 11th. Wow. Um, and so Aunt Harriet gave me a scripture verse, and it was Jeremiah 29 11. I looked at that two and nine as 11 and the 11th verse, and Jeremy was his name, Jeremiah 29 right. 11. How could, how could that be so perfect? And I really pressed in, and this is a wonderful scripture hmm. for everyone. Absolutely. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me. And I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord. So um, I went through a lot of inner healing um, at the uh, Toronto airport, catch the fire. And, and so one, about a year and a half later, Aunt Harriet said, Don, I think it's time for you to go to Israel. Mm. And the branch was got, taking a Canadian group. I'd never been anywhere without the family. And uh, I was leaving Merrick behind at what would she been five and a half. And away I went. I went on a Feast of Tabernacles, 1996. Wow. And um, I was pressing with the Lord, is that scripture verse says, and um, I, I said, Lord, I'll do 
whatever you want, because I know you've got my attention now in a way that maybe other things wouldn't have ever moved me. So I went there and I really fell in love with Israel and I was baptized and I rededicated myself both at the church in that year, uh, it was on Aunt Harriet's birthday and so also in the Jordan. I was the only one and I was kind of reluctant to be the only one, but I knew I had to do it and I did. Mm -hmm. um, and I came to know more about the embassy. So I came alongside as a good supporting member of the Canadian branch. Um, and then I learned that it was going to be shut down mm. after, say, 20 years. They were very, very active, the branch was, but then it was doing less and less. And uh, I thought, why would you ever do that? Why would you, you know? And so I was in communication with the headquarters and I wanted them to know that if I could be of help, I like to network, I like to bring people together, and I like to, I, I organized and designed the shirts for, for our group as we march as Canadians, and um, I thought I could do more. I was keenly interested. I felt that's what I could do. And so it closed, and on May the 1st, we just, uh, and there were two other people to come in, and they kind of walked away. We had a meeting with the directors. Anyhow, end of it is, the short of it is, I was there <laughs> holding, holding the, the, uh, the bag and um, they said, you'll do a great job. So I just rolled up my sleeves and in this office was the ICJ office. It's on our second floor of our house. And that's, I had people helping and I just had one. We had no money. Uh, we had to let the donors know and who am I? I'm not a pastor, I'm not male, mm. I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not all these other things. All I was willing to do is put a lot of sweat equity into seeing that the branch thrived. Wow. wow. Our son didn't thrive, but this could. And, and it sure did, Donna. When, when we look back 20 years, um, you, you know, at an almost no activity, almost uh, totally lost the status. There was even a change. We, we, we had to reapply with the Canadian government for the ability to be a nonprofit and so forth, correct? That's a very good point, Adam, because that, that was surrendered. The former director said they, they were wanting to, um, wanted CRA, wanted some funds, and they said, well, why bother? I'm retiring. And we will surrender our charitable status. Now that mm. status was in Canada since 83. That was a huge loss, mm. especially with uh, our government isn't necessarily favorable about this is donor money going to Israel. Right. Uh, so there's a lot of question marks about that, but there isn't because we are so clear. Uh, wow. CRA, how, how we designate and, and where the funds go. So we can say to the shekel, to the dollar, uh, where that goes. So it didn't look, I think that's probably why the other two walked because it looked like too much hard work. Mm, wow. <laughs> and um, so I just dug in and I went, I, took, I was taking Hebrew classes. I was going across the street to the chicken, kosher chicken where they were wonderful aroma of, of kosher chickens cooking on a Friday and they say Shabbat Shalom and I found a new little family um, and um, I, I went to many most all of the events within the Jewish community and there are many of them many mm -hmm. of them and I'd be one of the few Christians who would actually show that um, I was there with them Amazing. Uh, and I, I was part of grassroots groups for uh, Canadians. Uh, CAS was Canadians uh, against anti-Semitism. We did a big event with, uh, and then we did a man, anti-Semitism must end now. Isn't that a great? Uh, yeah. Um, and, and so I was with Jewish people and I was on a lot of Jewish boards, yeah. many, many. And um because I really wanted to know how, how could we come alongside them. And sometimes it's a little hard for them to understand that we are really true blue and we're there and we mm -hmm. really want to help. Um, but I think I have a lot of friends in the Jewish community. And I love them dearly. Mm -hmm. And um, I wanted to learn more. I wanted to learn more. Holocaust, um, survivor stories. Um, I can't tell you. I, I mean... It's poor, poor Meredith. Um, 
<laughs> you know, Mer Mer Meredith you know, is her daughter, right. by the way. Yeah. So I realized, you know, I was home, but I wasn't at home, you know. Um, I think you know what that's like, Adam. Yeah. So um, that's a little bit of the story. So I, I presented myself to, to them. And uh, um, so it's just step by step. It's, it's yes. day by day, step by step. And building those kind of connections and a lot of emails and a lot of meetings. And um, then we started to develop a base and people were happy to be on the base. There was mm -hmm. a letter uh, sent out and we found out how dreadful the mailing list was when a big pile of mail came back. Um, so, um, but you know, that's, that's behind me now. It's, and I can know. only see where God has brought all of this and brought me a team a fabulous team, a court team, uh, you included, Adam, and um, volunteers across Canada. I volunteer. I am able to. I am able to. So that was my contribution over the last 20 years. Uh, the office is free grant. Yeah. Uh, it's, um, it's, we, I don't know, we just, uh, and I'm, I'm very thankful that Richard also saw what was um he might not have understood it completely um from a biblical point of view but he did understand that it was good and yeah. he was a man of high integrity yeah. he, he caught he caught the vision and yeah he, he caught the vision and he supported me whereas you know listen he didn't have to wow that's wonderful donna you know looking back and for you just going over the past few minutes it all i see is the faithfulness of god you know, how the Lord used what the enemy intended for evil in your life uh, to, to, to impact um, the world, really, when you think about it. Because not only are we impacting the Jewish community here, we're doing, making a big, big indent and a big, big impact in Israel through the, the uh, international headquarters. Um, we're, we're just so honored and blessed, uh, Donna, for all your sacrifice and all the hard work, all you've put in. And uh, today we give God the glory. Um, listen, before we close out this segment, and I'm sure we could go on for hours, <laughs> you know, yeah, for 20 years of stories and 20 years of uh, testimony. Uh, but let, let's, just, let's just thank the Lord uh, together and, and, and together with our donors for his goodness. Um, Donald, could you just close us out in prayer? Just thanking God for his goodness uh, over these past 20 years. And thank you for watching for supporting, uh, for donating. Um, it, it, we wouldn't be able to do this without you viewers. So let's pray, Donna. Heavenly Father, it's because of you. We give you the glory and all the glory. And it's by faithfulness and your grace and your guidance and your provision that we've come from a branch uh, in the world of ICJ from little contribution to being in one of the top uh, yeah. six, maybe six, within that six core group, maybe even four now. And Lord God, that um, I want to be faithful, to, and I have been faithful to you, that most of the funds go and to help those Israelis who are in need, the Holocaust survivors, mm. the orphans, the uh, widows, the... Um, red carpet uh, projects for women on the street who are being yes, helped Lord. and you, um, guided. Um, Lord God, that with, with the Olim and, and the Alley and the absorption, bringing the Jews home, that, that's your promise. Yes. And yes. we're part of that promise. Um, so Lord God, we thank you for your faithfulness, for your guidance. And Lord God, that, um, that we would strengthen us and grow us so that we can even do more. Amen. We want to do more for your people because yes, the Lord. hour is coming nigh and, and we feel the different signs of the times and um, we just want to be obedient. Yes, we yes. want to be in full obedient and Lord, uh, we just love you. We love you. And we understand how you love your people and Amen. all people of the world because it's through them that there will be worldwide redemption. Yes, and we're Lord. thankful for your plan and your promises being fulfilled. Amen. Amen.
We are here at the Haifa home for Holocaust survivors in Haifa. In the midst of this corona crisis, it's a great privilege for us as ICJ to be on the ground to help our dear residents, those that have to sit now in their room and cannot really go outside a lot. And we are there as ICJ team to help them, to support them, to give them emotional support and whatever they need. It's a great privilege that we can do it. In Haifa, there are about 13,000 Holocaust survivors that are still alive. Many of them live alone. And especially in this time, they need our help. So with our Israeli partner, what we do, we just bring food to people that are sick, that are at home. And uh, here you see our, our team of volunteers packing the packages and we're gonna bring them to many of them who will be very happy to receive some food. אתה מרגיש? יותר טוב. יש לנו קופסה עם כל מיני דברים טובים בשבילך, אנחנו נשים את זה חוץ מהדלת שלך, שאתה יכול לקחת את זה. תודה רבה, גברת. תודה רבה לך. תודה רבה לך, בריאים, באמת, כולכם. טניה? תודה. ואנחנו מביאים קצת מזון לבית שלך. שאת תהיה בריאה ו... אתה יכול לקחת, ואנחנו מאחלים לך כל טוב והרבה בריאות. תודה רבה לכם. בכיף. תהיו בריאים, ואתם עושים מצוות. ממש בכיף ובאהבה. Especially in times of crisis like this, we can give our comfort and encouragement to the people of Israel, and therefore, please partner with us, so that our Israel, you're not alone, will sound really clear and loud. Exodus chapter 23, verses 14 through 17. Three times a year you are to celebrate a festival to me. Celebrate the festival of unleavened bread. For seven days eat bread made without yeast as I commanded you. Do this at the appointed time and in the month of Aviv, for in that month you came out of Egypt. No one is to appear before me empty-handed. Celebrate the festival of harvest with the first fruits of the crops you sow in your field. And celebrate the festival of ingathering at the end of the year when you gather in your crops from the field. Three times a year, all the men are to appear before the sovereign Lord. Hi, my name is Rabbi Shmuel Bowman, and uh, um, I'm a Torah scribe and also uh, the director of uh, Operation Life Shield. So Sukkot is, in its simplest definition, the Feast of Tabernacles. The technical construction of a sukkah is very interesting. The walls, like the walls of this sukkah, can literally be made of any material. Uh, the walls in this sukkah are made of some kind of a fabric, totally fine. They can be made out of wood, you see that, it's very common. What matters is the, is the roof. Um, they can be made from leaves. Uh, palm leaves are very, very common in Israel. It can't be uh, like a branch grown from a tree that's connected to the ground. It has to be cut and uh, placed on top of the roof. You have to be able to, uh, be able to see the stars. Uh, you also have to be able to uh, experience rain. If it should rain, you should be able to feel the raindrops. But on a sunny day, it should be able to give you uh, shade from the, from, the, from the sun. Powerful experience to feel this temporariness, this, I would even say, vulnerability. At the same time, that increases our faith in God that really is sheltering us. 
So what's going on inside the sukkah? Some really wonderful Bible study going on. Torah learning that takes place between uh, parents and their children. It's also a chance to read the Bible itself. After all, the actual commandment is in the book of Leviticus. It's a time to really learn and teach uh, about what it means to be uh, sheltered by God. What does it mean to have gone through the journey in the desert for 40 years? Uh, these are the, the discussions that are going to take place. They may have to do with conversations that we may have wanted to have throughout the year, but maybe this is the first time that we're able to sit together, relax, sit in the sukkah, no one's going anywhere, right? For many, many Jewish families, it's the really, the, it's, it's the vacation time. Some of my favorite things that I do uh, in Sukkot with my family are literally moving into the sukkah. Um, there's a tradition that we move out of our house as much as possible and move into the sukkah. We're literally camping out there. Sukkot was considered to be the most happiest time, and we want to celebrate this happiness with everybody. As a matter of fact, it's a time when all the nations would come and celebrate in Jerusalem. We're actually watching with our own eyes the prophecy actually come true of the nations all coming up to Jerusalem to celebrate with us. And that is so, so powerful. Um, it's not just that I'm seeing a group of friends coming together and, 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 and praying and worshiping and singing and dancing in Jerusalem. You're actually fulfilling God's word and doing that. And, and that's amazing to see that. It's another testimony that says, yeah, we're living in a very, very special time. We have a very warm and very special and historic friendship uh, with the ICEJ. We live in a time when most of the world is not really standing with Israel. Um, and either they're actively against Israel or they're condoning uh, ac actions against Israel and their silence, right? One of the things we've learned about in the Holocaust is that, the, that silence in the face of evil is evil. And that exists in the world. To be able to have friends from all over the world who are coming to Israel and marching in Jerusalem, it warms our hearts. All my friends come out to the, to the march. They're coming to Israel night. We love it because it's, it's you know, we, we really love uh, being embraced and embracing back and saying, wow, we know who our friends are. Through the prophet Elijah, the Lord worked mighty miracles all across the land of Israel. This year at the Feast of Tabernacles, we want you to experience that same fire of the Holy Spirit as in the days of Elijah. Journey with us through seven days of exciting Sukkot events in Jerusalem and all around Israel. Join us live from Qumran on the shores of the Dead Sea, where the voices of the prophets still echo. From Capernaum on the Sea of Galilee, where Jesus' miracle working power was on display. And from Mount Carmel, where the fire of God rained down. You don't want to miss a minute of this year's feast. When you register online today, you'll get access to all seven live shows from around Israel and over 80 plus seminars from Bible teachers and experts around the world. You'll also be able to join us for global prayer and anointed worship from Israeli and international artists. Shalom, everyone. We're just so glad that you've been tuning in so far on Inside Israel with ICJ Canada. I want to again personally invite you to the 2021 ICJ Feast of Tabernacles online. Come and register and be part of what God is doing right in the Holy Land from September the 20th to the 27th. You can join from right where you are. It doesn't matter if you're on the East Coast or the West Coast, right from your very home. You could join together with a group from your church. Even for the price of one admission, you can have a watch party. Listen, you don't want to miss out. September the 20th to the 27th, $50 admission. You get in for the full week of live seminars from all around Israel and then hundreds of other seminars that you can watch at your own time throughout the year with quality teaching 
and encouragement right from the Holy Land. So register today, icj.ca, and we'll see you at the feast. We conclude our program today with some sites within Israel. Thank you for joining us today, and be sure to visit our website or call us at 1-866-324-9133. And for our Canadian residents, be sure to ask for your free Canada-Israel pin. Through your contributions to ICEJ Canada, you can participate by giving to Haifa Home for Holocaust Survivors, Women at Risk Red Carpet Project, Operation Life Shield Bomb Proof Shelters, Mentoring Programs, Alia Support, Children's Projects, Israel in Crisis, Israel Aid, Gan David Adam Emergency Services, Christian Friends of Yad Vashem, Scholarships for Young Adult Leaders, ICEJ Canada Media Fund, Gift Estate Securities Fund.